Hi everyone. So this is uh, Roger Yates, and I thought, well, the modern thing is to do these YouTubey, YouTubey type things. So my video, I'll get rid of these, I suppose. Um, so I thought I'd do a YouTubey type thing uh, video. Right. So those who don't know me, quick, uh, quick history. Been a ethical vegan since 1979. Was a Sea Shepherd crew. Uh, very active in the 1970s, uh, 80s, conservateurs. Uh, um, got involved with lots of action groups, very single issue in those days. Done a bit of academia. My MA was about the British animal protection movement, and my PhD was the support pillars of speciesism, which are philosophy, religion, and everyday social practice, if you're wondering. As a sociologist, I tend to focus on the latter, so I've got some videos about uh, the socialization process that you could check out. Okay, now the reason that I thought I might try and do a few of these uh, newfangled videos, because um, everybody, uh, everybody seems to be doing them, and I am getting fed up of seeing young, attractive guys on YouTube. I think it's time for old ugly bastards to have a go so it's me and Cameron Blewett I suppose sorry Cameron okay so uh, I want to talk today for this first time starting off uh, in a critical mode as we should about the relationship between or if there is one even between reducitarianism and veganism my position is well I've got this um, concept which is welfareist do welfareist and you could extend that to reducitarians. Reducitarians do reducitarianism. Fair enough, that's what they want to do. The problem is, at the moment, it seems that all reducitarians, for some reason, seem to believe that to make their case, they have to take the piss out of vegans. So there's a lot of mocking of vegans going on, whether it's Matt Ball, whether it's Brian Capeman, whether it's Tobias Leonard, whether it's Sebastian Joy, they're all kind of doing this denigration of uh, vegans for a variety of reasons. So um, it seems to me that that bit of vegetarianism is dead wrong. There's no need for them to make the case in terms of, you know, the denigration and mocking of vegans, especially when they lie about it. For example, in a recent video by Matt Ball, he claimed that vegan education had been going on for decades, going back to the 1970s of the production and publication of uh, Animal Liberation by Peter Singer, and effectively that uh, veganism as an educational thing is an abject failure. Uh, this is totally untrue. Vegan education is new. We're talking about this century only. Matt Ball was the co-founder of Vegan Outreach, and his own group uh, shows the truth of the fact that veganism in an educational sense is new. For example, Vegan Outreach got into gear around about uh, 1990, didn't really get going, they were um, they were a fur group, anti-fur group, and then around about 1992 uh, then they bring in vegetarianism. When it gets to the more mid 90s they move into veganism or their version of it and not for very long uh, you know, it wasn't long before they were reintroducing vegetarian literature again. By 2000, they were uh, asking the rest of the movement, as it were, to join in with uh, vegan education. By 2005, they kind of abandoned it, claiming that it's it's not working. So really, they, they gave it maximum 10 years and declared it um, a failure. One reason for it, as they said in AR Zone in a chat, uh, 2011, was the fact that there's not enough money in it and uh, veganism is not good for fundraising compared with veggie and vegan and vegetarian this kind of stuff now I've got news for these people veganism is not a fundraising entity veganism is a justice for all philosophy something that I'll probably do another video about so um, you know now we've got this issue that uh, vegan, vegan education, they say, is a failure. It's not true. It's just started. And if we look at what I'm doing at the moment, which is the uh, Vegan Information Project, we're doing uh, 
uh, street stalls every week in Dublin. They're very successful. We're meeting new vegans all the time. Every single time we're meeting new vegans. And the people who are not vegan themselves, like the vegetarians that come up and they maybe try the plant-based um, cheeses, this kind of stuff in terms of samples, but also the flesh eaters, they're what I would call vegan curious. There's a lot of vegan curious people now. In fact, uh, one thing that we have in the VIP, something we call a tea station, which is a little kind of cafe area. It's not great, well developed, we could do more with it, but what, what effect of that means is that if people really want to chat, they can sit down, we give them a free cup of tea, and they can ask all their vegan inf um, you know, education questions, all their vegan curious questions that they have. And what we tend to find is that a lot of people have got lots and lots of questions that they want to ask us. Sometimes people might stay for an hour talking about uh, veganism with a VIP volunteer. So the idea that veganism is failing is rather fanciful. It's only just starting as an educational thing and in terms of this contentious issue that veganism is the moral baseline. And what I really mean by that is the fact that veganism is central now to everything that we do. This wasn't the case. Ronnie Lee talks about this. Other vegans from the 1980s talk about this, including myself. We were all vegan in those days. Most of the people I went saving with, most of the people I campaigned with were vegans. But we didn't campaign about veganism. I did lots and lots and lots of media interviews, not least for the fact that I was a press officer for the Animal Liberation Front. And so did lots and lots and lots of interviews. We hardly talked about veganism. We certainly didn't bring it up ourselves and we weren't really asked about it. And if we were, it was like a dietary kind of question. Okay, so. Uh, and another kind of weird thing in those days, groups like the League Against Cruel Sports and Questionable Farming were seen to be part of the animal rights movement, okay? Whereas the vegan society were just seen as the food group, you know? It was a very odd thing. I think for 20th century vegans, um, thinking back, well, I mean, they can't, but I can think back to the 1980s. And um, it's very difficult for modern vegans to understand where we're coming from in the sense that they're m moved into a movement in which veganism is so central. In fact, it's so central now that they're even talking about moving away from veganism and making things like activism as being the moral baseline. You know, we have fought and fought and fought for veganism. We've done it for years and years and years. And now for the first time, this is, you know, we're coming up to 17 years of it or so, you know, now for the first time, Veganism is the central thing that we talk about. It's the overarching philosophy by which we talk about anything else. And so if we want to talk about single issues, we can, but we do it within a vegan framework. We abolitionize it. You know, it's quite possible to, to do that with most uh, single issues. You know, we say that uh, we're vegans, we're animal rights advocates, we're opposed to animal use. This is a form of animal use, so therefore we're opposed to it, but we're also opposed to it across the board. It's very easy to abolitionize. Uh, single issues, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a problem. So, going back to this central issue, or the topic really, which is uh, the relationship of any between reduced vegetarianism and veganism, if we think about two uh, or three groups, we can think about reduced vegetarians, we can think about vegetarians, you can think about vegans. Now, the reduced vegetarians delight in telling vegans that we're the smallest group. Okay, well, at the moment, that's true. Hopefully, that will change. But the point is, the only reason it will change is if the vegans stick with the vegan advocacy, you know. Um, I always say to people, you know, are there new vegans out there? And they always say yes. Now there is nothing more important in animal advocacy, nothing at all, than finding more ethical vegans. Because ethical vegans, just by being vegan, are campaigning against everything. Now obviously the best type of vegan is an active vegan, but even if a vegan is not active, they are still doing good for other animals. Take the other idea of the veganism or the, um, the idea that uh, action is a moral baseline. Well, a non-active activist, I know that sounds silly, but you know, an activist who doesn't do much and yet they're not vegan, well, they're still uh, creating quite a lot, lot of harm. So it's much better to have a non-active uh, vegan on your, your hands, especially if they're ethical vegans. Not least because then we can start to deal with some of the kind of structural problems that are embedded in the fact that as vegans we still create, you know, harm just by, by living. 
so we need to we need to look at that so okay so vegans are the small group now there is less than vegan campaigning going on lots and lots of the major groups are moving into this now uh, Peter have been doing it for years the sexist racist ableist group that needs to be closed down but groups like Mercy for Animals now are getting millions of dollars for cage-free campaigns we've got groups like animal equality and getting fifty uh, five hundred thousand dollars for cage-free campaigns all of these groups are moving into this lucrative non-vegan less than vegan work so it's incumbent on the grassroots vegan activists to remain focused on veganism there's nothing more important than getting new vegans new ethical vegans so you know my attitude is even if you think that reducitarianism is compatible complementary with vegan education well that's fine my attitude to that is okay let the reducitarians campaign for reducitarianism let the vegetarians campaign for vegetarianism both of those involve forms of animal use let the vegans concentrate on veganism because we're the only ones of those three that will. They're asking us to do reducitarian work. They're asking us often to do vegetarian work. Okay, just in the same way as animal welfareists ask animal rights people to do animal welfare work. That's because they won't do animal rights work. In the same way as reducitarian people and vegetarians, they don't advocate for veganism. Yeah? I mean, it's kind of like hypocritical for them to do it, and so they, they don't do it, you know? I mean, obviously, we've also got uh, interesting propositions now, of course, that by not being vegan, you're doing the best thing for vegan, you know, the vegan strategist kind of idea, this kind of tactical kind of bullshit. We'll come, we'll come back to that in other videos, I'm sure. But my plea for this video, this opening video, if you like, and uh, let's see if there's going to be some more, is there are three groups, reducitarian, vegetarian, vegan. If you're in the vegan group, then my appeal is stick with veganism it's working it's also new don't be fooled by the lie that we've been doing this for decades and it's not working that is just flatly untrue it's something that they're saying to us in order to get these new vegans to be not vegan and to move in towards you know non-vegan campaigning i think the reason for that actually if if i come down to why would they do that why would they if you like poach the vegans who are the smallest group in the first place is because I think it's because they recognize that the vegans are the activists of the movement of those three groups you know what you want to say about you know non non active vegans but of those three three groups the ones who are going to be most vocal and active are the vegans and this is why the reducitarians and vegetarians want us on their side but on their terms so no to all that we're vegans we want more vegans we need more vegans to bring about a paradigm shift veganism is a radical idea yeah and so we need to maintain our focus on what we want and what we want is for a society based on ethical veganism and once we get that then we'll have a society based on justice and not on profit and once we get that or a big increase in people who agree with that and are willing to work for that then we can start to make significant change not just kind of bullshit around with these little reforms and little bans here and little kind of welfare tinkering here and everything we can start to make some fundamental structural change but the only way we can do that is for there to be in every society more and more ethical vegans because once we get socio-political power and a big share of that then we can really become movers and shakers and we can shake this tree around until then everybody else is just you know they're just uh, tinkering at the edges vegans don't want to do that we want to make fundamental radical at the roots changes okay so that's my appeal if even if you're sympathetic towards the reducitarians if you're vegan please stick with veganism let them do their own work you know, there's supposed to be more of them than us, okay? Let them at it, okay? You know, welfareists do welfareism. Let the reducitarians do reducitarianism. Let the vegans do veganism. Okay, this is Roger Yates.
signing out. Hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope um, I'll get around to do some more. Bye for now.